Hello and welcome to the TT Podcast. This is part two with Gary Thompson. Um, we left part one just at the start of your, uh, your Clark of the Course career, really. 2012, 2011 you got appointed. 2012 was your first TT. In terms of an experience, did you feel like you were ready for that role? Because that is a, it's an important role here at the TT, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty important. Yeah. <laughs> a lot better. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. I think I, I I had the benefit of being the clerk of the course for the couple of years before that, and then I was the um, before that as the race secretary. But uh, yeah, I um, I've I've always enjoyed being the clerk of the course at uh, at short circuits as well as as at the TT. But I, I don't know. There's as I said, there's something different about the TT. I, I obviously TT uh, time trial. Everybody starts off single single file every ten seconds. And and people people say to me now, um, God, I won't do your job for all the tea in China, and you know, I won't do your job for the golden watch or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, I actually find it easier to be doing the job at the TT than what I do on a short circuit. Uh, and I don't, to be honest, I don't do many clock the course roles now on a short on a short circuit. I, I tend to now do. Um, Clark of the course of the TT, Clark of the course of the Mans Grand Prix, and I'm the event safety officer at uh, at the Southern Hundred. Um, but in years gone by, I was doing Clark of the course roles at Mallory Park, Cadwell, and you know, at ver- various places really. Um, but the one, uh, the one I find it easiest in my f- f- sorry easiest, the one I feel most comfortable doing is the Clark of the course of the TT Mountain Course. Because there's so much responsibility on it, and you're tapping it, into your military experience there, um, or, or what? I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. I, I just, I just, um, right from the word go, I just, I just felt as though I talked to the event. I, 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 I'm not sure how to explain it to be honest. But you were at ease. Yeah, I, 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 I um, as I say, I, and I think a lot of it is, is because I'm working on the event all year, and I've, I work very closely with, uh, with the. Uh, uh, with the other, obviously, with the with the guys in the department for enterprise, you know, Paul Phillips, uh, Ed Wilson, Nigel Crenell, Sophie, people like that. And so we're we're, we're constantly, you know, I'm constantly involved in the in the in the TT all year round. And obviously, with the with the last two or three years of the COVID, you know, we, is, we've had a chance to look at every aspect of the of the event and uh, and make the improvements we have. But um, so. And I find that when I go, you know, in the past you go to the short circuit if, you, if you're appointed to run an event on on a short circuit, and it's I've got to be careful what I say here because I don't want to, I don't want to chicken uh, say again <laughs> chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to sound as on because you know, clock the course on any event is is important whether that's road racing or or off road, but but when you go when I'm in the past, when I've been clocked the course of a short circuit, you go, you know, obviously the tarmac, so everything's everything's kind of in place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, yeah, the the the, rect- the 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 safety protections all there, everything's there, and yeah, and you kind of you, you're kind of involved in in putting the schedule together, but mainly that's done by the by the organising club itself. So there isn't a great deal of um, unless the clock of the course is is part of that club for you to to get involved in. Mm-hmm. But here, it's you're in you're, you're involved in everything. You're in the trenches, absolutely, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're in the trenches. You're, you're involved in absolutely everything: the scaffolding, loos, the recticel, course furniture, uh, marshals. Uh, the, obviously, the, the schedule, the rebuild of race control, um, and all the the plethora of, and there is. I say plethora. I mean, there's a there's a huge amount of. Stuff falls out from that, and, and I mean, God, I mean, the emails. I'm probably, without exaggerate, I'm you, I'm probably looking at probably 100, 150 emails a day, and that's not really? just on the TT. I mean, that's other stuff as well. But there's a, there's a lot going on. There's a, there's, and and as, as I say, it's not meant to. I just find I just love uh, being involved in the TT. To the level, uh, to the to the level I am, and with the amount of um, uh, detail that brings in, you know, I, I, lo- I love being part of solving problems, and um, and I just so when I go up into race control, uh, so I'm, I'm probably explaining this quite badly, really, but when I go up into race control, 
and and something happens somewhere i know i know exactly almost to which corner it is which near which near which gate post it is mm-hmm. um you know you you i've been involved in that much detail in that much planning you just you've the whole course is in your head you absolutely know every single detail about it and and i suppose you do to a, an extent at a short circuit but i just love being involved in the planning of the detail of it to the extent i am and it's you know to close to close a public road and to turn that into a race circuit within 20 minutes half hour and that's it's impressive that's pretty that's pretty special 37 and three quarter miles that's that's pretty good you see you yeah. can hear the passion there mm. you know when when you're talking about obviously about the event and everything behind the scenes that goes on now my question to you somebody that's obviously high massively into motorcycling um what's the football thing flipping it <laughs> Lincoln City. What? I mean, what's all that about? They got a football team. He's just at the camp. Hey, he's on the. He's, yeah. he's there. He's there all the time. Yeah, really? I love Lincoln City. Yeah, um, oh, uh, and uh, and Boston United. That's uh, obviously my, my local local team, Boston United. I went there two weeks ago, first game of the season with, with my brother. You know, we were we were four 0 down at half time. But uh, <laughs> 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 Clearly, there's got to be a passion there if you lose a one at the time and you're still uh, on the ground. Oh, I mean, I've always been into football, to be honest. Um, I mean, dad was dad was massively into motorbikes, uh, as as was my, uh, all my uncles, and um, I think dad was quite disappointed when, <laughs> <laughs> when I started kicking up football, to be honest. But no, I've always always been a football fan. I mean, when I was in the army, I mean, you might not it might, doesn't look like it now, but my, my thing in the army was was running. I was a, yeah. a big runner in the army, cross country uh, and particularly athletics. Eight hundred and fifteen hundred meters was my, my particular thing. Yeah. They're the worst kind yeah, of distance. Uh, it's all those. it's all gone now, like. <laughs> That went about the direction of the thought when you said I just like running away when I'm in the army. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't say running away. He just said running. But that's what you took from it, running away. Hey, so uh, 2012, I bet you would like to have uh, to run away after the uh, the end of that. Do you know that, that? I mean, people, I've, 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 I've always been asked a lot of questions about that. You know, the, the first man to cancel the senior you know, and all this sort of thing. But first, first year in the role... You're the first person to cancel the first senior. man in history that to cancel the senior. Yeah, well, apart from World War Two and yeah, foot and mouth. But, but, yeah, the, you yeah. Know. but uh, but do you know at the time, I, I, I didn't. That didn't even cross my mind. Um, we, obviously, we, we the, the lead up to it was that we'd uh, we'd had a fantastic practice week uh, in 2012. First week was glorious weather. Then in 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 week two, there was there was lots of disruptions with the weather. Uh, and on Friday, I think it was Friday the 13th of June. Um, it would be wouldn't it Friday the thirteenth. That explains it. Um, uh, there was a day, it, right from the word go. It, it, it was like it was um, uh, uh, yesterday. Um, a uh, here, here on the Isle of Man, yeah, it was just it was low cloud, mist, fog, just pouring rain all day. So there was absolutely no way we could have got the scene that day. So we moved it to Saturday, and on the Saturday it started to dry. Um, but the low cloud and mist hung around, and it hung around all day, all day. Uh, and then I, I decided that we'd have we've got two course cars. In one course car, uh, there was myself, Connor, and uh, John McGuinness. And in this other course car, there was Phil McCallum, Ian Locker, and Milky. And when we went, we went from the grandstand through to Ramsey Hairpin, and it was as clear as a bell. The odd damp patch going through Glen Helen, places like that, you know, under the tree cover. Um, and 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 when we got the Ramsey hairpin, it was pretty clear uh, roads are dry from Ramsey up through the gooseneck. But then when we got past the gooseneck, uh, it started to get damper. And then from bungalow right through to Craigney Bar, it was well, it wasn't just wet. There was standing water. Yeah, you know, mm. it was puddles. So, so that was it. You know. Yeah, um, it was an easy it was an easy decision to make really. Um, the, the decision was my obviously senior race was six laps and I was thinking constantly um, you know six lap race and then obviously we had the the, the, the lightweight race uh, and and people were starting to pack up because it was it was a Saturday um, people were starting to pack up in the paddock they had to get get away to get the ferries um, and we were we were constantly then receiving calls in the race control from the marshal saying what well, I've, I've got to go I've got to go I've mm-hmm. got a ferry, ferry to catch so the uh, decision was um, made then to cancel the senior run the run the uh, lightweight race, uh, and I don't even think about it at the time. But then, of course, the next day the headlines was uh, 
clock of the course, cancels the CT, TT. Yeah. First time it's been cancelled in history. And I thought, fucking you know. hell. <laughs> I bet you didn't feel Jesus. very popular. Oops. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oops. But like you say, when you're up, when you're up on the mountain and there's standing water, oh, it's an easy decision to make. But yeah, no yeah. one else has no one else has seen that. No. I mean, there were, there were puddles at thirty second. You, you could splash in. Yeah. You know, splash, splash of water. So yeah, that was it. How much, or do you? Is a question, I suppose. Come under criticism from the competitors if you cancel wet races. Um, I think I come under a little bit of criticism that year. Actually, there was there was one or two riders who 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 wasn't happy that I cancelled it. Um, I mean, the, the the standing joke at the moment, I think, is is they say if, if if somebody walks down pit lane, for Christ's sake, don't don't spit in pit lane because he'll put a thirty minute delay in. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but I am. I am incredibly, and probably some some people say I'm over the top, but you know it's um, it's got to be it's got to be pretty near on. It's got to be dry. It's got to be dry. Or if it's not dry, then the damp patches have got to be in the gutters. You know, not on the racing line. You know. Uh, you know, Thai technology as it is. That was my space. racing line. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> God, but, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's um, and. And I think with the with the race schedule as it is, and the and the um, and the flexibility of the race authorization, and the and the road closure or times and orders, we, we we can do that really. You know, there's you know all this you know in years gone by, you know, people say, oh, you know, we used to send them out in the fog. They went out in the fog. They went out when it was pouring rain, and Joey couldn't see the man in front of him, and all. You think, oh dear, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sleep at night if I, if I did. Well, I wouldn't do that. The reason for asking that, you know, I last. Um, guest Dave Molyneux uh, would happily go out in any condition on slicks as would you, he? as you're probably aware yeah right well actually right oh Molly I am sorry <laughs> <laughs> right in 2 is it 2.12 or 2.13 we had a we had a practice session on Wednesday evening and uh, we and it, it was raining it, it stopped raining but it was uh, there was a lot of a lot of water around on the track and uh, on the course, I, I don't like calling it. No, it's not a track of the course. On the course, and so we, we we decided not to send the solos out, and we put the side cars out. And so I went around the side cars, and in fact, Molly asked me to come down from race control, and uh, he wanted to see me in the race office. So I went down, and there was Molly there, and there's a few others, and <laughs> and they said, "Put us out, put us out. We, we'll go out, you know, with the side. We, we'll go, we'll go out, absolutely no problem at all." So. I, I went around to see a few more side cars and they went, yeah, 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 we'll go out, we'll go out. So um, I went back upstairs, made the announcement, right, okay, uh, having discussed this with the side car team, side car drivers, um, we're, we're going to put the side car session out. But the one person who didn't go out was Molly. <laughs> really? <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Molly. Right. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so then beyond 2012, you kept your job. Thankfully, <laughs> yes, Thankfully. indeed. Yeah. Um, what other years stick out for you? Well, when? the next year, to be honest, two thir uh, was it thirteen or fourteen? Um, uh, that's when we started um, uh, moving. Obviously, because then you know, whether it's climate change or whether I was just bloody unlucky, but you know, there was always weather problems. And we, what we then started to do was, um, if uh, we had to move the superbike race, you know, well. We had to move the superbike race from the uh, Saturday to the Sunday um, because there was lack of qualifying, mm -hmm. and it was then when we started to move move the race to the Sunday so that we could have the full uh, full day qualifying on Saturday. Um, we, we did start to do that, and that went that really then went down well. And I think then, you know, obviously I don't think many people knew me in 2012, and, uh, and they knew you after the uh, <laughs> yes, after the senior after race. Yeah. But then, but then the next year, when we when we started moving, because what 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 I don't what what I, what I don't um, what I would never do, and I, I never have done, I would never I would never make a decision without speaking to the riders first, because uh, for me the most important thing is is that yeah at, at the end of the day I've I've never raced a bike in anger, certainly not about well I've never raced a bike in anger apart from my unsuccessful time as a sidecar passenger, but. So I would never make a decision without speaking to the riders first, and I think hopefully 
they they accept that or they they know that I would I would always speak to them first and, and get their opinions. And obviously, I've still it's still down to me to make that decision, but I was I would always speak to them first, and um, and I did that year. I said, look, have, have you done qualifying? You know, what do you think and all that? And was, well, you know, and it, and it wouldn't just be the top ten. I would always go down to riders in the middle of the pack or mm -hmm. riders to the end of the field and just get a, a general overall feeling really. And you know the general overall feeling was that we 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 need more practice time. So we moved. This, that's when we started to move the races to the next day, so mm -hmm. we, we could generate more time. And and I think that's where the if like the trust the trust comes in. You know they they they, they all know. Um, hopefully they all know that I would always consult with them first before I would do anything like that. Yeah. So I guess your job is one job that it's a bit like a a lifeguard at a swimming pool, right? You don't want to be called on. You yeah. don't want to be used. You just want to say, "Yep, everyone go," and then everyone gets back safe. Yeah. So, I guess how many of those years have you had when it's it's not been plain sailing? Because I don't think it ever will be. But have you had no. any years where you've gone, "Oh, that was that was relatively easy." I think uh, when did John Munson sing? Uh, two fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, yeah, two fifteen. That wasn't a bad year. It was either fifteen or sixteen. It might have been sixteen. Um, 16 was a pretty good year uh, and in fact I, I remember that year because uh, on the Wednesday which was Super Sport 2 and uh, the lightweight race in the afternoon um, we was absolutely bang on yeah cause that's right because 216 we had it was glory it was pretty good weather on the Monday we had a, a, an RTA uh, road traffic accident about 10 minutes before road closure so that put in a three hour delay so everything was bumped up three hours but on the wednesday uh, again glorious weather bright blue skies sun was cracking the pavements wasn't a cloud in sight and um uh everything went through scrutineering was all set to go and then we, we found out in race control that somebody had forgot to fill up the uh, generator in part fermi so <laughs> So every, every, there was no tie warmers. Yeah, you think bloody hell. So you know, uh, and that was pretty much the that's the one I remember from sixteen. So it, it must have been pretty good to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I do remember that year. It, it was pretty, pretty, pretty plain. Then pretty plain sailing, and well, I'll say it was it was as good as it was going to get. I thought you were uh, going to say eighteen. Eighteen was good. Good weather. Oh, eighteen was yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, eighteen was fantastic weather. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, I, I do. I do remember sixteen, eighteen. Eighteen was fantastic weather. What kind of um, you know, like we're here now. It's Max Grand Prix. You know, yesterday was called off. Uh, you called another flipping day off. Um, <laughs> no, no, the weather was obviously uh, bad yesterday. Yeah. Know? But what kind of things do you have to plan around? Well, a, what I do is to um, reschedule. Yeah. Well, the, on, the, the, on a normal day for the Isle of Man obviously yeah I mean they I mean yesterday we we um we we called it I called it as early as possible I mean the I could have probably called it early to be honest but um I always ring Ronald's Way uh weather center as early as I can get the general view of what what how it's going to be and they, yesterday they said look you know, it is going to clear up through the afternoon um I said well you know oh, at the at this stage you know, do you have, can I, and this was 10 o'clock yesterday morning, so I said, is that, um, I could, do I call it now, do you think, or do I wait a bit? They said, well, give us a ring back later in the afternoon, uh, the, the next model comes through, so we'll, we'll give you a clearer picture. So, so there's that on one side, so obviously I want to make, I want to have the, the latest up-to-date weather models to, to base the decision on, but on top of that, the, the, the things I'm, uh, I, I always consider, or the main things I consider is, um, at the TT, obviously, we've got to reinstate or t take away the one-way system. So that's and close the mountain section before we close the, the rest of the course. So that's uh, that's two and a half hours before start of start of practice. Um, so the, re the remainder of the, the the rest of the course is closed at six o'clock. We start the uh, 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 taking the one-way system or taking the one-way system away or closing the mountain about about half past four. So so there's that. Um, the other thing is is what I try to avoid is everybody wheeling the bikes up, going through a technical inspection, getting everything set up in part, part in, in the assembly area for me to then say, sorry guys, we're not going tonight. So I try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is obviously marshals start going out on point. 
um, and it's like, uh, and the marshals, God bless them, some of them are sat there for hours before the, the, the start of the race or start of practice. So I always try to make the decision before the marshals start going out. Um, obviously, for more important than anything, we want to settle the riders down. So, you know, we don't want the riders thinking, shit, he hasn't made the call yet, it's raining, it's this, because that's going to get everybody, Yeah, to, I would imagine, get everybody, you know, I won't say panicking, but you know, obviously nervousness because of, of the conditions. So, uh, again, I try to make the decision so that it takes that away. And then the other one is um, is, is uh, to minimise the disruption to the public, because if I close the roads, and then and then made the call, or oh, sorry, but we're not going. Which occasionally that has happened. Mm -hmm. When the public are gonna get pretty pissed off with that, mm -hmm. you know, and and then and then the public are gonna start thinking, oh bloody TT or bloody Mance Grand Prix or bloody Gary Thompson, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's it's important to to make these decisions so we minimise that disruption to the public. It's not, I wouldn't, have, yeah. You said earlier that you know there's people that say I won't have your job for all the tea in China. I don't think I would be. Because you can't please everybody doing that job, can you? Oh God, you're gonna, no! You're going to upset someone along the yeah. way. Yeah. So it must be. Um... I mean, the one person, the one person's job I wouldn't have at the moment is a lady called Jane Corlett. Jane Corlett is the chairperson of the TT Moss Association, and uh, obviously, you know, we've we've made the decision now to to run tomorrow afternoon, uh, mm -hmm. Wednesday afternoon, as a as contingency. So um, uh, before I came came here, I think we were. We were 30 morsels short for tomorrow, and, and Jane's doing what she can, bless her, to, oh, Jane and her team basically, are doing what she can to, to, to get more marshals signed on so we can run tomorrow afternoon. And that's a pretty intense, I mean, basically, you know, that God, God love them, marshals, all volunteers, everything, you know, to try and, you know, try and find 30 marshals to come in um, extra to, uh, to marshal around the course. You know, 37 three quarter miles, we need nearly, up nearly 600 marshals. I mean, that's a. Yeah, I remember you telling me that at the TT, and I couldn't believe that. Yeah, she, that she's got marshals. a. Yeah, she's got a. She's got a pretty big task there, and, she, and you know, she's a, she's amazing. She does a great job. What well, they all do in the, the the TT main board of directors in the TT main office, but you know, to to have um, and I kind of rely on them, you know, because obviously you know the TT may fall under the race organisation, so I, I kind of look at Jane and the team to to recruit the marshals and put yeah. the marshals in place. That's a pretty, pretty big task. That, to be honest, it's almost as hard as my job sitting opposite Steve Player. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, we're going to get to your quick fire questions shortly. But before we do, two things I want to talk about: the future of the TT and your involvement of it. And then we can't not touch on. We touched on probably the the lowest part of your TT career, starting at 2012, cancelling the senior. Hmm. But 2019, we managed to squeeze oh, in the five races in a day. Yeah. I mean, there was a whole documentary made about that. <laughs> it was it was a, a feat of sheer. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how you'd explain it, but it, yeah, yeah. You you explain it. Guys. Well, I mean, TT two nineteen. God, I mean, that was. Uh, I remember. I think it was the. Well, there was five five literally five days where we didn't turn a wheel. I think it was the the Wednesday of uh, week one through to the through the Sunday. I think something like two, Tuesday through to the Sunday, and then Sunday was you know arguably questionable because there was, it was there was gusting wind so I mean some riders came in and and weren't too keen because it was pretty windy but you know again we had discussions beforehand and given given that we hadn't done anything for five days that I think everybody just wanted to get out there mm -hmm. really um, obviously then we had to completely rewrite the schedule and there was a, a Paul Paul Phillips tweeted this photo there's me and Paul stood by this blank whiteboard <laughs> yeah, with, a, with a marker pen <laughs> the yeah. what do we do next <laughs> um, but we um, um, so we did we, we I think we, we, we raced on the, the Monday that was the super bike race and the super sport one race uh, and the sidecar race and then the super sport one race was reduced to two laps well in fact the super bike one way uh, super bike race was reduced to one uh, two laps because of the uh, the incident at Snugborough Super Sport One race was reduced to two laps in the evening because of uh, Paul. I, I'd always never forget Paul. I can't imagine how he felt, but Paul Jordan was almost being chased across the mountain by by rain cloud, and we just managed to get Paul Jordan in before yeah. the deluge uh, deluge started. S Tuesday we didn't do anything. Uh, the Wednesday, or no, the Tuesday we did, uh, and then the Wednesday we didn't do anything because of weather. Um, so that meant that on the Thursday uh, we had to rewrite the schedule to get five races in. 
because what the next thing was was the uh, what was supposed to be what well, well, what did uh, thankfully turn out to be the senior race day um storm moira was coming in oh, that, yeah, 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 yeah that was coming in what we thought was going to be kind of early afternoon so we went into the thursday being four races behind we'd actually finished the day being one race in front of ourselves because i brought the sidecar race sidecar two race forward onto oh, the, away from the senior day onto the thursday so what races took place then so on the thursday we had super sport two uh sidecar two super stock super twin in the electric bike race and we threw in a uh, uh one lap uh, practice for the senior boys so they could scrub in the tyres for the next uh, just to show off yeah just to show well, off yeah, whatever but, you, but it's not it's I mean it does on paper it sounds great yeah five races in a day and everything but but you know well I say I don't want to kind of dress it down but the, the other thing is we, we, we couldn't start until quarter past 12 in the afternoon mm -hmm. uh, because obviously we couldn't we couldn't close the roads until 11.30 with it being a Thursday so we we couldn't get the first wheel turned until 12.15 but um, so it was uh, kind of five races in half a day, uh, yeah. in some respects. Uh, but we did obviously we did go into the evening. But obviously because of the program and because of the issues, we had to reduce uh, the races yeah. all redu with reduced laps. And why and can't for the listener? Why can't you close the road until then? You said it, you said a Thursday. It's uh, it's something. It's well, traditionally the Tuesday and the Thursday are the two alternate days, um, and they've always been the days that have been put aside for the crematorium because obviously opposite uh, the uh, the pit lane uh, opposite the, the grandstand complex is the crematorium. Mm -hmm. So they're the two days that are res reserved for uh, crematorium you know, for services at the crematorium. So. Future of the TT looks rosy. Brilliant, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the the work that's been done the last three years. You know, uh, I mean, I've not I've not really got involved in the the marketing side, the publicity side, the media side. You know, the 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 the, the TV side, but obviously that has grown exponentially. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, the the I didn't see much of it this year. I mean, I've watched all the programs since, but I didn't see much of it on event. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, was, I was tired that we wanted to other issues. <laughs> Plus, um, I mean, what's the what's the um, what's all the viewing on TT Plus since? I mean, God, fantastic! I mean, yeah. you know, wherever you are in the world, the access you've got now to to watching the TT is just it's never been better. Um, and and we're now looking at obviously works being done next year to to uh, uh, on the on the schedule, you know, to to uh, extend the TT to that third weekend. Um, which looking at the schedule, I think for every everybody concerned. Uh, whether it's competitors, officials, or spectators, uh, and, and obviously and marshals, it's just gonna it's gonna spread everything out just that little bit further, all, all be only by one day. But mm -hmm. that one day makes one hell of a difference. Um, it reduces each of the race days, and I think everybody involved um, just gets a much better experience of the of the TT fortnight. And um, you know, and again, for anybody who can't make the fort, uh, the, the fortnight, that the TV view in there of what's been in place for this year, so they still get that uh, TT experience uh, online or uh, on on the programmes. F fantastic. As easy as that, Steve. Yeah, just as easy as that. Yeah. Let's have some quick fire questions. Right, young man. Mm. Young. <laughs> <laughs> right. Six, Sixty next year. Bloody ten. Old. Ten questions. Yeah. Quick fire. One or the other. I don't no. want any explanations, please. Okay. Beer or wine? Wine. MotoGP or Premier League football? MotoGP. Good lad. <laughs> Suit and tie or leathers? Leathers. Pineapple or never pineapple on a pizza? Never pineapple on a pizza. <sighs> Weirdo. <laughs> Mass start or time trial? Time trial. Solos or sidecars? <laughs> Solo. <laughs> Lincolnshire or Isle of Man? That's a very good question. I know. Um, and I want one answer. Can I just give a... <laughs> no. <laughs> Lincolnshire. <laughs> Michael Dunlop or Guy Martin? Michael Dunlop. A trip away with the lads on bikes or a beach holiday with the missus? <laughs> 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 I knew that would come into it. Uh, a 
chip away with the lads on the box. <laughs> Last one. MBE, BEM, or a senior TT win? That's a very good question. Mm, I know. Because you've got two and I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> um, bloody hell. That's... If I had the ability, skill, senior TT win. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gary, it's been an absolute pleasure. We'll let you get back to your day job. Great stuff. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Thanks, Thanks, Steve. Steve, Gary Thompson, uh, a guy whose job I don't envy at the TT. Hey, it's never easy. It's never easy, I believe when it's good weather and good going you know, but when the weather's up and down and aggro aggro but again I'd love to have delved into his uh, his, his career prior to uh, being a clerk of the course as well he's a fascinating bloke I'm quite lucky I suppose I've been, I spent quite a lot of time with Gary away from TT and racing and uh, it's so interesting it really is and as you say a bit like uh, I'll ask guest Molly you could just spend the night with him in the pub cheating and chatting absolutely well, well let's get him on for uh, for another episode at some point That was the Gary Thompson episode of the TT Podcast. Make sure wherever you listen or watch your TT Podcasts, make sure you leave us a rating, a review, because Steve loves to read them, don't you, Steve? Always. I've read that Glenn Irwin had left us a review. Yep, correct. He was uh, speaking fondly of us, of course. And we're yet to get anything below a five-star review. Just just saying. So clearly we are the number one podcast for motorcycling out there. (laughs) (laughs) Loads more tales from the world of the TT coming up for you in this series. And on next week's podcast, we have the man who finally made it onto the podium in the lightweight series in 2022. It's Paul Jordan. Oh, it's great. I got a lift in the air ambulance. Oh, that one? Yeah, that one there. Coming to pick you up again. By now. myself in the Glen Helm wall. And the Superton lost the front, just coming out of it, heading towards Sarah's. Straight, just lost the front. And I thought I was going to pull myself out of it, just pinned it. Just went, boom, straight into the wall. The lad behind me just thought it a great idea to drive over me. That episode is coming out next week. And if you want all the latest news, views and gossip from the world of the TT, head over to iomttracers.com and check us out on all the usual socials. We are at TT Racers Official. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, mate. And thanks for listening. <laughs>